So starting from February 1, 2024, Google and Yahoo will start applying their new rules for email senders. So to keep your newsletters out of the spam folder, watch this video for simple step-by-step -step instructions. Okay, so let's have a look at how to do this inside MailerLite. So these are the email sender guidelines. And if we scroll down a little bit, you'll you see the requirements for all the senders. I just made a screenshot of this. So we have a a good overview of what to do. So first things first, there are a couple of things. So for example, this one over here. So the second one over here, the PTR records. To be honest, I'm not really sure what it is, but I asked MailerLite's chat support whether or not I should do this or whether they are doing that from their end. And as you can see here in the chat, so I asked them in the chat, so the PTR and headers are handled by us as the emails are sent through MailerLite. I also asked whether or not I can read more about it instead of just me trusting him on his word. But apparently they did not have a document for this. He's writing to me, rest assured that our deliverability team made sure that we are prepared for the new requirements. I also asked another thing, so about this line over here, so the internet message format standard. So all messages should follow that standard apparently. And as you can see over here, I'm asking for a document where they explain like how they meet that requirement, but apparently they don't have a document where they explain it. According to this support member, they have handled it. So if we take a look at these requirements from Google, so then we can check these that we don't have to do those things. Then we can make sure that they Mail a light is doing these things. So from my understanding, we only have to make sure this is correctly set up. So the SPF and the DKIM. So we have a few others here. So keep spam rates, for example, below 0.1%. So obviously that is not just a setting that you can just switch on or off. That's something you have to do in the content of your newsletter. So I'm not going to discuss that right now. I'm also not sure about the TLS. I think this is something that has to do with the Google workspace and not necessarily for setting up newsletters, but I might be wrong here. So let's start with the uh, SPF and the uh, DCAM. So as you can see, I'm still in the classic MailerLite builder. So I'm not using the new MailerLite, but I will also show you how it works inside the new MailerLite. So I think it's basically the same. So for the classic version, I'm gonna go to the top right corner over here. I'm gonna click on it. And then I'm going to go to domains and here we can see my domain. And as you can see, I already have a custom domain verified. So if you're still sending with a Gmail email address or another free email address, you should switch to a custom domain. So one way to do it is to use hover.com. So they offer a professional email address. So a small email inbox, it uh, costs $20 per year, but then you have your own custom domain. So to make sure your new custom domain is verified, you're just gonna click on add domain. And then you're gonna fill in that email address. If you're entering your email address, you'll receive a verification email. You're gonna click on that link in that email and then that domain is verified. So that's pretty simple. So before we're gonna continue, let's switch over to the new version of MailerLite and show you how it works over here. So I'm gonna go to account settings and then over here we have domain. And here as you can see, it's basically the same thing. So if you wanna, if you wanna add a new domain, you're gonna click on add domain. You're going to fill in that email address. You will receive a verification email. You're going to click on that link and then your new domain is verified. So the authentication and the domain alignment is the same here. So I'm going to go back to the classic version over here. I'm going to click on authenticate. So the next thing we have to do is we have to add a tax record inside our DNS settings of our domain. So that might sound really complicated. So if you aren't sure where your domain is hosted, you're going to enter your domain and I'm over here. So in my case, that's this domain. I'm going to click on show NS records. By the way, I'll leave a link down below to this uh, DNS checker in the description of the video. So I'm going to click on show NS records. And as you can see, my I already knew it, but my domain is hosted at Cloudflare. So I have to use Cloudflare if I want to change my DNS records. So I'm going to log into Cloudflare right now. So the moment you're logged in, you're going to click on the website over here. And then the next thing is you're going to click on the DNS settings. And then here we have all the DNS records. So we're going to go back to MailerLite and I'm going to copy this first part over here. So I'm going to select it and I'm going to select copy. I'm going to go back to the DNS records and I'm going to select this button over here, add a record. So it doesn't really matter if you have a different hosting. Every hosting basically has a DNS settings tab and also every hosting has a button that says add a new DNS record. So in my case, it looks like this, but it might be different in your case if you're using a different hosting. So I'm gonna click on add record, and then here we have to select the type. So in this case, we're gonna select a text record. So I'm gonna click on this icon over here, and I'm gonna scroll down 
until I see the text record and I'll see it and I see it over here. So text, I'm going to select it and then I'm going to fill in the name and I'm, I'm going to remove this last part over here. So I'm going to remove that. So only this. And then we're going to go back to mail a light. And then we're going to copy this content over here. I'm going to click on copy. I'm going to go back to the DNS records and I'm going to paste it over here. And over here we can add a comment. So this is not required and it might be not even possible inside the hosting you are using. But just for future reference for myself, I'm going to add DKIM MailerLite. So I know this DNS record is for the DKIM inside the MailerLite. So I'm going to click on save. So as you can see, I now added this DNS record. I'm going to go back to MailerLite. So now we're going to add the SPF record. So this is also a tax record, as you can see. So I'm going to copy this first part over here. I'm going to go to DNS records. I'm going to click on add record. I'm going to scroll down again for text. I'm going to select text. And then for the name, I'm going to use this. I'm going to go back to MailerLite again, and I'm going to copy this part over here. I'm going to go back to the DNS records and I'm going to paste it in here. And then for the comment, I'm going to do the same thing again. So SPF mail a light. I'm going to click on save and now I'm going to click on check DNS records to see if it's working. So as you can see, I received an error message for both uh, cases. So for the DKIM records, apparently they were not found. In the SPF, it says it has more than one record. So remove all others and leave only one. So you can only have one SPF record. It also says that it can take up to 24 hours for new DNS settings to become active. So it might be the case that it is not active yet. I'm going to click on it again. Let's see if it changes. So as you just saw, I checked it again and the DKIM, so the DKIM was just approved. So it took like maybe five minutes before it was uh, approved. So I didn't change the thing, but the uh, SPF is still not working. So I went to my DNS settings over here and I searched on SPF, as you can see. And as you can see, I have two records. So uh, as you can see, I made this comment. So I know this one is from MailerLite. So what did I do? I copied this content over here. I searched it in Google. And apparently this is for the MailChimp. SPF record. So I've used MailChimp in the past. So I'm not using MailChimp anymore. So I can remove this setting over here, which I will do. I'm going to click on edit and I'm going to remove this text record. So this is the SPF from MailChimp. I'm going to click on delete and I'm going to click on delete. So as you can see, now I only have one SPF record and that is how it should be. So I'm going to go back to MailerLite. I'm going to click on check DNS records. And now it was approved as well. But now the DKIM wasn't found anymore, which is a little bit weird since it was just verified that it was found. Okay, I clicked on it again, as you just saw, and now it was approved. So now I'm authenticated. And I also want to show you what happens basically when you add this uh, authentication, so the DKIM inside your MailerLite account. So this is an email from last year. And as you can see, it says via and then mlsend.com. So this is the MailerLite server. Also, if you click on this icon over here, you can see it says mails by mlsend.com and signed by mlsend.com. So now if I send another email with my MailerLite account, which we'll do just in a bit so you can see the difference, the signed by should have changed to my domain name. So signed by should be my domain name. Also, the via mlsend.com should disappear from the header over here. Also, if we click on this icon over here and you're going to go to show original. So here you see show original. Here you can also see the SPF and you see the DKIM. And let's see how it changes if we send a new email. So I'm going to go to campaigns. I'm going to click on create campaign, create a random test email over here. I'm going to click on test DKIM. I'm going to click on next. I'm going to click on create a new email. I'm going to choose this rich text editor. It doesn't really matter for this example. This is a test email. I'm going to click on done editing. So obviously I don't want to send this email to everyone in my list. So I'm going to click on advanced over here and I'm going to say choose a field and I'm going to say email. And I'm going to choose an email and I'm going to say equals. And then I'm going to fill in the my email address over here. Ref I'm going to click on refresh. And now it says only one recipient. So that is good. I'm going to click on next and review and confirm. So only one person will receive this email. I'm going to click on next schedule and I'm going to click on send. So as you can see, it still has this header over here. So mlsend.com and it still also says signed by mlsend.com. So this shouldn't be the case. Maybe it takes a while before it uh, implements this new setting. So I'm going to just wait for 15 minutes. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to test it again. 15 minutes later. So it's been a little longer than 15 minutes. I had a nice little lunch. So in the meantime, I tested it again. So this is the first email 47 minutes ago. And as you can see, it says the via mlsend.com. 
And with this new email, as you can see, zero minutes ago, it doesn't have that, that header anymore. So if I click this icon over here, you'll see now it says signed by and then my domain name. So if we go back to this earlier version, it says signed by and mlsend.com. So this is the DKIM. So this is the DKIM that is working right now. So apparently it takes a few minutes before it really is working. But this is just for you to see what will change if you add that DKIM authentication. So as you can see here as well, the header. And if we click this one, it doesn't have that header. So if we click this icon over here and we go to show original, and if we also check that original email from 47 minutes ago, so if we click this icon over here and show original, so here you can see it has the DKIM and it says domain mlsend.com. And here we also have my own domain name over here. And one other thing for you to know, so the SPF that we added, you can't see it from the outside like the DKIM. So this is the DKIM as I just told you, but the SPF, the tax record SPF we added, you cannot see it from the outside over here. So there's one more thing, which is the mailed by mlsend.com and to change that we have to go back to our MailerLite dashboard and we're going to go to domains again and we're going to add a custom domain so i'm going to click on add custom domain but just before we move on from my understanding you don't have to add this one as well so the custom this is the custom domain so that is this one connect your custom domain so you don't have to do that in order to comply with Google's new requirements. From my understanding, if you add the SPF and the DKIM, so that is what we just did, then you should be good to go. So you don't have to add that custom domain. So I'm gonna click on add custom domain. And as you can see, there is an important note over here. So make sure the domain name you select so we have to enter a subdomain over here. Make sure the subdomain you select is only used as a custom domain for MailerLite and no other purpose. So don't choose a subdomain that's already in use, such as the one you receive emails on, usually mail.example.com, your domain name. So let's have a look in my DNS settings. So I'm gonna open Cloudflare again. I'm gonna log in and I'm gonna click on DNS settings here on the left side over here. And I'm gonna see if that mail.domain name is already taken. So we have to make sure we choose a subdomain that is not already in this list. And just so you know, that name where we will choose here will be shown inside over here. So instead of mlsend.com, here we will see that subdomain. So you have to take that into consideration. So one example is we can fill in newsletter. Another example is that you can fill in, for example, info. So info at, and then your domain name. So I'm gonna use info. So I'm gonna click on add, and now you see this page over here, and we have to add these records to our DNS tab as well. So we're gonna add these records to our DNS tab. So I'm gonna copy this first part over here. I'm gonna go to the DNS tab. I'm going to click add new record. I think it was an A record, right? So yes, an A record. So uh, it's already on A. So the name is info. So this is the name, right? So we don't have to add this as well. So only info will do. And then we have to add the content. So I'm going to copy this part over here. I'm going to click on copy. I'm going to go to DNS again, and I'm going to paste it in here. I don't think we should use the proxy status over here. So I'm going to remove the proxy status DNS only, I think. I'm going to click on save. Then we have to add another record, so which is the MX record. I'm going to click on copy over here. So it's again the info. So now we have to add an MX record. So we're going to go to Cloudflare again. I'm going to click on add new record. I'm going to search for the MX, and it's over here, MX. So it's info again. So so this is the content and then I'm going to click on, oh, by the way, we're going to add a comment. So this is the custom mailing server mail alight. I'm going to click on save. Oh, we have to add a priority. I'm not sure it says any priority. Oh, we suggest using a priority equal to 10 when creating an MX record. Okay. So this should be 10. I'm going to copy this comment. I'm going to click on save. I'm going to click on edit on this one. I'm going to add that same comment over here. Custom mailing server mail alight. I'm going to click on save. I'm going to go back to mail alight and I'm going to Copy for this text record. So I'm going to click on copy over here. So again, it's the info, info dot, and then a text record. So I'm going to go to DNS, click on add a new record, scroll down, text, so info. So this is correct, info. The content is this, and then the comments, custom mailing server mail alight. So this is just for my reference, right? So I know in the future what this DNS record is. So I'm going to click on save. So now we added these records. I'm going to click on check DNS records. So it wasn't found yet. So it can take a while 
So it can take up to 24 hours. Normally it just takes a few minutes. So let's let's wait a few minutes and then uh, let's see if it's um, if it's working then. Yeah, apparently it works right now. So custom domain racket was approved. Uh, make sure to enable it. So make sure it's on on. So it's already on on here with me. So let's try to send an email and see if the if we can see the custom domain server right now. So I'm just going to copy this email and I'm going to send it again. I'm going to click on schedule. Just making sure I am only sending it to one person. Yep. Only one person review and confirm. I'm gonna maybe change the subject to test the AKM and custom server review and confirm sent now. So I just received the mail that we sent. And as you can see, if I click this icon over here, it still says mlsend.com. And it might be just the same reason that we had before that we need to wait a little bit longer before this is also working. So let's wait a few more minutes. Let's have another lunch and then see if it works. One day later. So as you can see in my account, I did a lot of testing, but it still wasn't working properly, as you can see. So it still says mailed by mlsend.com. So I decided to contact chat support, as you can see over here on the screen. So I uploaded a screenshot of it and I'm saying that's already a day later and it still hasn't changed. And after a while, I got this message. Our team removed your domain from the account and re-added it again. So this fixed the issue. So now it is working. So I tested it myself. So this is the test I did. So one hour ago, and as you can see now it says mail by, and then we have that info dot, and then the domain name we added inside our DNS settings. So I'm not sure what they did, whether they removed the entire domain over here with this bin icon, or maybe they just switched the on feature to off. So I'm not sure, maybe try this first. And if it's still not working, you can try the bin icon and you can always contact chat support, of course if it's still not working.